hello i've wanted to do a video for a while on currency um because i feel like we're all kind of missing a bit of a trick really um i see a lot of very intelligent very open-minded people discussing um what i believe to be an inevitable change to a digital currency and they're doing so in such a way to suggest that we can kind of change again what i believe to be an in inevitability i i think that our currency moving to a digital footing is something that is just going to happen whether we like it or not and i think that while we have the people who would see the dangers there focused on completely stopping it we perhaps don't look at the the very real risks uh, that that come from policy when we're quite so black and white and maybe this is the conspiracy theorist in me but maybe that's kind of the point you know that if we are all so focused on um digital currency being inherently evil then we're not gonna focus on the policies being put out by various governments around that digital currency so i believe and i know that i'm i'm not this isn't a viewpoint shared by you know even most of the people that follow me on tiktok for example but i believe that we will look back our children will look back with some amount of amazement that we carried around bits of paper with writing on that explained how much money we had i just think it's not something that's going to carry on and uh and i think that there's good points to that as well as bad i think there's definitely a lot of uh harm that can come from that but i i, I strongly believe that the majority of that harm comes from the, the policy surrounding it i mean look at what's happened to nigel farage in the uk he's had his bank accounts closed he's gone to i think he said nine different banks and couldn't open a bank account in a very kind of social currency sort of way and the government have now had to because of what's happened to him introduce a policy that says banks cannot just close your account because you don't have enough money or because of your political leanings i'm not sure if the first part of that's true actually i think they can still close an account if you don't have enough money but perhaps that they have to offer an alternative which i believe is what nat west who own, owns coots who he was with have had to do they've had to offer him a nat west bank bank account because they've removed his bank account now that i think is far better than somebody perhaps for political reasons having their bank account removed that's a real slippery slope and this is what i think that we should be discussing we should all be talking about currency moving digital and what it is that we expect our mps our politicians the people who are leading our countries to actually put in place to ensure that that transition is one that works for us. I've seen some very weird stuff. Like I saw an Indian guy at the WEF conference talking about how brilliant it was that they could timestamp money so that it could, you know, um, be on a timer and self combust after a few years. Stuff like that is proper nuts. We need to be honestly having some long chats about not having uh having policies like that um stuff that we want banks to make very very clear to us and yes i i hear the people who are saying well what if there's power outages what if there's problems with this and that i would say that that's going to be a that's going to be a drastic problem anyway you know at the moment the majority of people's money is kept in banks and it becomes digital so there is definitely a, 
definitely a conversation to be had there but I think that that should probably be being had anyway when we live in a society where you know 99% of our of our transactions are done electronically um what I want to talk about now is I want to talk about the idea of a new reserve currency now everyone is very very quick to talk about BRICS releasing a new reserve currency for the record I haven't actually seen anyone from BRICS suggest that that's the case. I've seen a lot of conversations about how people within BRICS are moving temporarily to using the yuan while they work out what they're going to do and that people are moving away from the petrodollar irrespective of uh, you know if of which country they're from or what other currency that they're using and that's all very very interesting. But I will say that for, for my understanding of BRICS and what BRICS is, it's about multipolarity. It's about having lots and lots of countries that are equal and trade with each other equally. And I feel like a reserve currency is, is, is unipolar. I think that if there was to be a, another reserve currency, it would be more unipolarity, which I, I believe is what BRICS is, is dead set against um, having. So I would think that there's more likely to be questions and answers from people far cleverer than me on how they can cohesively support countries to trade internationally in their own currencies without the dollar or a reserve currency at all i think that that's why it's taking so long i i don't believe for a second having had a rudimentary look at the chinese economy that they would want the yuan to be the reserve currency i think that china is far cleverer than that <laughs> it it doesn't really benefit the people in the country if the reserve currency is your currency. Yeah, you can get on a plane with a few notes and go and spend it somewhere else. But actually, it means that any money that's made in your country can be removed and taken elsewhere. And it makes it very easy to launder money. And it makes it a whole different ball game when it comes to assessing what money is coming in and out of the country who who it belongs to what businesses are being bought who they're owned by who they're bought by all of this stuff china's very very keen to keep a, a solid eye on because fundamentally it's those um socialist some would say more communist socialist um ideological standpoints that have allowed china to develop in the way it does and allowed it to support infrastructure and development and um, ingenuity in the way that it has. So I think here in the West, when we look at China and we go, oh, well, they're going to take they're going to take over. They're going to become the new reserve currency. You, you kind of miss what what China's kind of done with its currency and how important it is for China that its currency isn't worldwide, that it's like directly related to China. I do, however, believe that the African Union will produce a currency for the African Union. And I believe that's something that Mr. Lavrov is heavily involved in. And that is because at the moment, most African currency is held in France. And I think that <laughs> colonial enslavement I'm not sure how else to put it, but let's be real, is coming to a swift, sharp and looking at France, very violent end. Um, Africa is fully realising itself for the important role that Africa has to play in this world and how important it is that Africa is united and is, is together. And I think in that sort of environment, a currency that's shared throughout Africa, which is nothing to do with the French, very, very <laughs> important disclaimer, 
is is really really necessary and i think it will drastically improve the livelihoods of people in africa now i've done videos on uh on the french riots and colonialism and i haven't necessarily gone into too much detail about currency but of course that's a massive part of it the fact that france controls the currency of 14 african countries is whether some people want to admit it or not a massive reason why there is there is instability and and dramas happening between the french and african people in france it is but what i want to really ask French and Europeans in general, is it helping you? Are the people of France supported by the French government ripping off Africa? Is it something that actually benefits you? Because it seems to me that this is all benefiting a very, very, very tiny amount of people and not really benefiting anyone else at all. And I say that because I don't want to see any more of the black and white, I, ironic to use that, black and white, this is a black Muslim issue. This is because these people were evil, you know, at their core, from white people. I don't want to see it anymore. It's heartbreaking to see how quickly so many people jump to racist, xenophobic tropes and you know i use those words carefully because they can be hugely demeaned and i will very soon do a video on the difference between tribalism and racism and xenophobia and how one of those things is okay two of those things aren't but how we're taught to kind of roll them all in together and how that creates further divisions amongst us. However, today I really thought it was important that we talk about currency, you know, because we we have the BRICS summit coming up. We have all of this information, some of it very new, it's not new, but some of it's very new to people about just how controlling France is over Africa. And yet we still have people saying things like Africans need to leave France. Well, I would say first and foremost that French people need to leave Africa, <laughs> leave Africa alone. And I don't mean tourists. I don't mean migrants. I don't mean people who have settled down. I mean, stop holding on to African resources. I mean, stop insisting that trade through um, from Africa comes through France you know it, it, the biggest exporter of exotic wood from Africa is the French that's not right <laughs> like this situation is so far from okay yeah so we've got that going on we've got bricks and we've got some real um tone deafness you know macron asking if he can turn up to the BRICS summit as if he's not the problem embodied you know and we have to us white europeans have a real conversation about how we decouple ourselves from a horrendous colonialist past so that we can move forward freely compassionately and with love because at the moment we're not doing that and that is a huge uh, that is a huge problem so i would very much like to see the french come out with some realistic aims as to how they intend on repatriating africa with its own money and maybe the introduction of an african union will be uh, a huge part of that because perhaps we're going to be able to say look you can't say, oh, well, we don't know, we don't know which countries these came from, you know. Well, we can't give the gold back to that country because it might have come from the one next door. When Africa, if Africa's united, when Africa's united, that's not going to be an argument anymore, is it? And perhaps that's one of the big reasons why colonialism has always called upon separatism to do its dirty work. Now... I think uh, 
we need to be having big conversations about our own currencies, about what they're backed by, about what they mean, about what they're doing for us, about why there is so much corruption and so little um, awareness, you know, accountability. I think we need to look at how things are going to be moving forward. Are we honestly going to sleepwalk into a digital currency with which we've not checked the uh, the policy of because we're too busy arguing about whether it's going to happen at all and how are we in the west in europe going to allow countries self-determination so that in part we can join them in a multipolar world these are the questions that we need to ask and they don't have to be they don't have to be bad questions. They don't have to be questions about culture clashes or race or religion or not being able to get on with each other. We can literally just put our hands up right now and go, hey, this is what we've done. We understand that that's not cool. <laughs> this is how we want to move forward. This could actually be the way that we show we're ready for a multipolar world. This could be the way we prove to a trading block that is bigger than us. Countries who are soon to be richer than us. Countries who we have long needed for trade and for resources. And are now in a position where they can start calling some shots. This could be our opportunity to say we're better than this now. We've awoken from this now. And we want to join you on an even footing because my fear is that if we carry on this not listening, not listening, not listening, let's just talk about how this not happening, it's not happening. No, no, no. We carry on that footing. Not only are we going to lose our own identities when it comes to money, you know, uh, uh, and be trapped in a, a, a digital currency hell. Uh, with policies that are devised by people who have abjectly shown they don't care about us whatsoever. But we're also going to find ourselves in really hot water with countries that we require moving forward for trade. That's really important because if Africa and Russia and China decide to sanction us because we've been holding on to African resources, because of what we've done, we are going to be right up the creek, yeah? I would really, really rather avoid that happening. Not least because as a mother, a disabled mother of three children, living in the front room of my two bedroom council house with no carpets, in a, a country where we can barely afford to turn the heating on, I am telling you right now that being a white British woman with, con you know, considerable education, I've got a good education, has not done me any favours when it comes to having money, yeah? The colonial aspect, the imperial, in fact, with the British, the imperial aspect of our cultures is not doing the average person any favours. And in that, we can see that we're all fighting on the same team here. The people of Africa want permission to control their own resources, to control their own currencies. I've seen white people say, well, they couldn't handle it. Do you know what? Maybe they can't. Oh, well, China will just take over as if, you know, black people can't do anything without either a Chinese person or a white person to tell them what to do. But do you know what? That is actually up to the, it's nothing to do with us. It's certainly nothing to do with me. It's not something I'm benefiting from. It's not something my children are going to benefit from. We are backing a losing horse. It might have been fun for a while for certain people, but right now we are falling massively behind in this game that we are forcing the rest of the world to play. So perhaps it's time to take a breath, think about how we're going to try and make this right and move forward in peace. 
again my name on uh, youtube and my name on tiktok is diplomacy is free and that is because diplomacy is free <laughs> you don't have to pay for diplomacy you just have to listen and speak from your heart and that is something that's missing in western politics and my aim is to try and and maybe get people to see that a bit because i feel like that's the only way we're going to get out of this well and um and i think that it's really important if you think it's important too then please do come and follow me on tiktok i've got a wonderful community of people there it's very vibrant lots of conversations etc um feel free to get in touch love hearing from people and i also have a patreon and a buy me a coffee if people are up for help and support my work um really really great to start to develop more of a community on youtube appreciate that a lot so please do like share this video and also subscribe to the channel if you enjoy what i've said all the best